Yes, there is the juice, but what the studies have focused on is the juice concentrate because the cherry juice has a higher concentration of melatonin than the whole fruit. All right. And in one study, participants suffering from insomnia drank uh, 16 ounces of tart cherry juice or the same amount of placebo juice each day for two weeks. The cherry juice increased sleep time by an average of 85 minutes. That's pretty good. If you're suffering from insomnia and not sleeping for long periods of time, if you're not sleeping for that long, if you wake up in the morning after five hours of sleep or six hours of sleep and you just can't sleep any longer and you've tried melatonin, tart cherry juice is worth a try. What's up, my friend? I'm health expert Ted Rice, and today I'm super excited to share this episode with you. This is the ultimate guide to sleep supplements. And if this is your first time listening to the show, what this show is about, what Legendary Life is about, is it's all about clearing up health and fitness confusion by breaking down science-based information on how to lose fat, prevent disease, and live a longer, healthier life. So if that's what you're interested in, then you're in the right place. And if you want this guide in a PDF format along with the video presentation sent to your inbox for free, go to legendarylifepodcast.com slash supplements and I will send you the muscle growth and exercise performance guide, the fat loss supplement guide, and today's guide, the sleep supplement guide, all for free. We've got two more, but we will be coming out with several different series afterwards. So if you want all five free supplement guides, go to legendarylifepodcast.com slash supplements. And again, you get the video presentation if that's what you're into. If you want to see the actual PowerPoint slides, actually we use Keynote, not PowerPoint, but we also send you the downloadable PDF so that if you want to click on the links and use the promo codes that I'm going to be sharing, you will be able to do all that. And we send it to you for free, legendarylifepodcast.com slash supplements to get all of that information. So let's get into it. Today, you're going to learn everything you need to know about supplements to sleep better. And before I get into it, a couple of things that I've got to get out of the way first. So what I'm going to go into is general health information for adults over 18. And what I'm sharing is strictly for educational purposes, and it isn't medical advice. If you take medications, it's up to you to talk to your doctor before you implement anything that I'm going to be talking about here. And really, you should always check with your doctor before you do anything exercise, nutrition, or supplement related. I also want to say this presentation is built on scientific studies. Now, that's really important because what scientific studies do is that they test supplements against either a placebo or just test the supplement to see if it does anything at all. Why is this important? Because people will take supplements and say, oh, yes, it really works, but then they'll do a study and it shows that people just feel better when they take supplements and they what they actually do is change their mindset, they change their behaviors, and we never think it's us who does it, but the more suggestible you are, the more you believe in what you're taking because you read the marketing, the more you're going to have this placebo effect. So this the randomized controlled trials that I'm basing these supplements on are a way of getting rid of that bullshit. <laughs> so we know what actually works instead of someone just kind of telling you, oh, hey, this really works, but they didn't take into account because they weren't analytical enough that they changed all these other things at the same time. And just understand too, some of the supplements we'll talk about may interact with medical conditions or medications like I already said. The last thing is uh, that if you take a product from any company, make sure you do research on the product and the company that makes it. And we're going to be talking about some herbs and just understand that herbs have something called batch to batch variability, which means that one batch of say valerian root that we're going to be discussing may have a different potency than a different batch. So if you take the herbs and not a standardized extract, that is something that you need to know. 
Now let's talk about sleep for a second. Sleep is one of the most important things that you can do to improve your health, your performance. In other words, if you want to look, feel, and perform better in every area of your life, sleep is critical. And here I'll say it a different way. You will never feel, look, or perform your best without quality sleep or the right quantity of sleep. I didn't say you can kind of do it. You might be able to do it, but it'll be hard. You will never, ever feel, look, or perform your best without focusing on your sleep. Now, sleep supplements can help, but it really starts with the right approach, meaning if you have underlying medical conditions like sleep apnea, then you need to lose weight. If you got depression, then you need to deal with that. If you have prostate conditions, then you need to deal with that because those are separate issues that are causing sleep problems. After that, you want to practice good sleep hygiene. Now, I'm not going to go into that because I've done, um, you can go to legendarylightpodcast.com, type in sleep. We've got many different episodes on sleep. I've got a sleep master, a two-part sleep master class that you should listen to. Lastly, other things that can affect your sleep are chronic stress, past trauma that hasn't been resolved. In other words, you know, you had this trauma happen to you and it's something that's still affecting your life, particularly your sleep. And also chronic pain can also influence sleep and sleep issues can also influence chronic pain. So those are all things you need to understand that supplements are going to help, but they're not going to fix. So that said, let's dive into the first supplement, which is magnesium. Now, magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in the human body, and it plays so many important roles in your health. One important role for sleep is that it affects brain health. Specifically, a deficiency in magnesium can lead to this excited state in your brain. So if you've ever had an overactive mind at night, magnesium can help with that. And it may even be the result of a magnesium deficiency. Magnesium deficiencies are actually more common than we think, especially if you are an athlete or if you live in a hot environment where you end up sweating a lot, you lose magnesium through your sweat along with other electrolytes. So they're more common than you might think. And the thing about magnesium too, is it's something that you need every single day and is very safe. In fact, I was looking just to see if people died from taking magnesium. And I did find one case study, but for the most part, I've seen sometimes they use magnesium, intravenous magnesium in obstetrics with pregnant women, you know, delivering babies. And I've, I saw a woman who got 25 Mil, uh, grams, I'm sorry, 20, not milligrams, 25 grams of magnesium, okay? And 25,000 milligrams of magnesium. And she was okay at the end. And it was due to a medical error in a hospital, by the way, because they messed up uh, the bags of uh, what they were supposed to give her. So it's very, very safe. But there are some people who shouldn't take it. For example, you've got to do your research. If you're taking medications like bisphosphonates that are used to treat osteoporosis, if you're taking a calcium channel blocker, or uh, if you're taking antibiotics, you need to do a little research on magnesium. And also, if you have kidney disease, magnesium supplements can be unsafe. So you got to talk to your doctor about that. Now, how much magnesium do you take? Well, the recommended amount for adult men is 400 to 420 milligrams per day. And for adult women, 320 to 360 milligrams per day. Now, we don't know what optimal magnesium status is. So that's just another conversation that we're not going to get into. But I will tell you this. The best way to boost your magnesium levels is to focus on eating magnesium-rich foods. Leafy greens like spinach, nuts, like almonds and cashews, beans, and avocados are all excellent sources of magnesium. That said, depending on your gut health, your diet, supplementing is worth a try to see if it helps your sleep. And also, we talked about if you sweat a lot, you may, uh, you're going to have a tendency to need more magnesium than someone who doesn't. 
Now, if you've ever taken a supplement before, a magnesium supplement, you've seen magnesium citrate, taurate, threonate, gluconate, glycinate, and oxide. We're not going to go into all the different types of magnesium, but I will say this. Avoid magnesium oxide. It isn't absorbed by your body and tends to literally go right through you, causing diarrhea, otherwise known as disaster pants, when you're not expecting it, right? So stay away from magnesium oxide. You've got to look on the label of the magnesium supplement you have or the one that you're about to buy. If it contains oxide in it, you're just making supplement companies money and, and you're, you're crapping it out right into the toilet is what I'm trying to say here. So the standard dose of elemental magnesium is 200 milligrams, but you can use up to 350 if you feel a benefit. And I want to say this, you're, you may say, well, elemental magnesium, what does that mean? We'll talk about that a bit later in the facts, but right now, all you need to know is that you you want to, uh, it, it should tell you on the ingredients label, but if it doesn't, you want to look it up, how much elemental magnesium a certain uh, magnesium supplement has. And also avoid taking magnesium with calcium, iron, and zinc at the same time in high amounts as these minerals will compete for absorption. Probably a common supplement you see is magnesium, calcium together. Don't do that because that's like, you know, you're taking two things that compete for access into your body. So there's no point in doing that. Let's get into the supplement that I recommend. And the number one supplement I recommend here is MagTech by Natural Stacks. And it's a combination of three different magnesiums, including something called Magteen or otherwise known as Magnesium 3 and 8. Now, why is Magnesium 3 and 8 important? Well, it's was developed by MIT, and it's been clinically shown to pass through your blood-brain barrier and increase the amount of magnesium in your brain. Why is that important? Because if you're taking it for sleep, that's where you want magnesium's effects. You don't want it necessarily in your muscles. You want it in your brain. Now, what I like about MagTech is it combines three different high-quality forms of magnesium, including magnesium 3 and 8 or magtine, and more importantly than that, I'll just tell you like this. I took MagTech and I took it before bed. It's the only oral magnesium I've ever felt a difference from taking. And I've taken a lot of magnesium supplements. And the best thing about it is I can save you 25% off on your first order if you use the code LEGENDARY15 at naturalstacks.com. So that's LEGENDARY, all capital letters, the number 15 at naturalstacks.com, and you can save 25% off your first order. So the next supplement is melatonin. Now, melatonin, as you may know, is a hormone produced by your pineal gland in your brain, and it's responsible for regulating your circadian rhythms to manage your sleeping and waking cycles. So for example, when you wake up in the morning, melatonin levels go down as the light, as it gets brighter outside, as the sun comes up. And at night, or if you dim the lights, melatonin production increases. Melatonin helps you fall asleep faster as well as enhancing your overall sleep quality. So it's important to point out here that if you fall asleep easily, melatonin may not help you that much, but it's still worth trying. Now, your body makes melatonin out of the amino acid L-tryptophan, but since supplemental melatonin is, is inexpensive, and uh, more reliable in terms of the research than tryptophan, there's no reason to take tryptophan instead of melatonin. Another interesting benefit of melatonin is that if you suffer from gastroesophageal reflux disease, aka GERD, melatonin can help. That's because melatonin has been shown to block the secretion of stomach acids. In fact, in one study, 36 people taking a melatonin product or Melatonin with omeprazole, which is a common medication for GERD, was effective at relieving heartburn and discomfort. Another study found that a supplement containing melatonin reduced symptoms of GERD in 100% of study participants compared to only 65.7% of the group taking omeprazole. Now, I learned this with my wife because she suffers from high stomach acid levels, and melatonin is one of the things that helps 
reduce her symptoms and allows her to go to sleep at night, even if she's got burning in her stomach. So how much do you take a melatonin? Well, what I want to tell you is this is a bit of a controversial thing, but here's how I tell people to do it now. Start with half of a milligram, otherwise known as 500 micrograms. And you take that a half an hour before bed and you see how it works for you. Then if it does work for you, stick with that. If it doesn't work so well, then start by increasing the dose by 0.5 milligrams each week until you find the lowest effective dose that works for you. And you'll find there's a sweet spot. If you take too much melatonin, you'll end up with a hangover. If you take too little, you may not feel anything at all. And I want you to know that melatonin is very safe. Studies have used up to doses of 100 milligrams in athletes, okay? Huge amounts. And had beneficial effects on inflammation and other things. And I've read some stories about people actually in Asia, I think Japan, I think it was, that tried to commit suicide by taking a whole bottle of melatonin. Like it, it's, uh, don't want to get into it, but suicide is, is more common out here, but it doesn't work. So you can take a whole bottle and it's just going to probably give you a massive headache and, uh, you know, mess you up a little bit, but it's non, it's very non-toxic. But that said, don't take more than five milligrams per night. Now, time-release melatonin may be more effective at sustaining sleep throughout the night, but I found this to be very individual according to my experience and the feedback from my clients who take melatonin. So what you've got to do is you've got to test different supplements to see what works for you. And what I'll tell you is this, don't buy the ones from your local drugstore. From your supplement store, okay, but invest in a high-quality product. Don't be cheap when it comes to supplements, especially melatonin. That's what my dad did, and he thinks melatonin doesn't work uh, until I got him to try a higher quality form of melatonin. Now, the melatonin I recommend is Source Naturals 1 milligram sublingual melatonin. There's a mint flavor and an orange flavor. I've tried both. They're both nice. I like this because it's 1 milligram, so I can just bite it in half and take you know 500 milligram micrograms rather because that's the right amount for me but uh you it's easy to take more as well and it's the one that I've gotten the best results from taking and I've tried uh probably a dozen different melatonin supplements if not more ashwagandha is the next supplement now the name of ashwagandha is withania somnifera and as I've talked about in other supplement guides, it's an Ayurvedic herb and it's been used for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine. And its second name, its species name, Somnifera, means sleep inducing. And it's been recommended for uh, improving sleep quality for centuries, for hundreds of years. Now, ashwagandha is regarded as an adaptogen. In other words, it's a natural compound that helps your body adapt to stress. And it does so by correcting the imbalance between your immune system and your neuroendocrine system. So in other words, it helps you if you have a lot of cortisol coursing through your body, it suppresses your immune system. So it, come, it balances things out in a way that you end up feeling better, more energetic, and less stressed. And due to the relentless pace and pressures of today's modern lifestyle, so many people have insomnia, but it's mainly triggered by chronic stress. Nearly 50 to 70 million people in the United States experience insomnia. So if stress is a problem in your life, then ashwagandha is a good choice to test for reducing stress and improving sleep quality. I'm so impressed with ashwagandha. Although there are several active components in ashwagandha, it seems the triethylene glycol is the ingredient responsible for its sleep-inducing effects. So how much of it do you take? The clinical dose that has been used in studies is 600 milligrams of the ashwagandha KSM-66 extract with 5% with thanolides. So the supplement that I recommend is Daily Nutra Ashwagandha. I did some looking into this. Now, I haven't personally taken this supplement, but this is, if you're a client of mine paying me to be part of my group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching, this is a supplement I recommend because I did a lot of research. I did a lot of digging to see where the best quality ashwagandha comes from and 
where does it show up and whose products does it show up? So Daily Nutra has this special form of KSM. I don't have a relationship with the company, but you can go to Amazon and look for the Daily Nutra KSM 66 ashwagandha. And they have the right dose, the 600 milligram dose, and it's 90 capsules for 90 servings, 600 milligrams per serving. So for 90 days, and I think it's 25 bucks. So it's a really impressive research showing the effect is efficacy, efficacy, can't speak English today, of ashwagandha. Definitely worth trying if you feel like stress is something that is affecting your sleep. Next one, CBD. Oh, we're opening up a bit of a can of worms now, but I'll tell you, even though there's not a lot of human trials on uh, CBD, I have experimented with it personally and I've gotten great results. Now, I'm not taking it now because it's illegal in Asia and the drug laws out here are very strict, by the way, podcast for another time. But you've probably heard someone mention CBD by now. It's all over the place. And as you probably know, it's a cannabinoid and comes from the same plant as marijuana. But unlike THC, the other main cannabinoid in marijuana, CBD won't get you high when it's by itself. And there's a lot of promise in the animal research on CBD. But like I said, a lot, uh, very few human trials as of 2019. Here's the issue with CBD. In case you've tried it and it didn't work for you, the industry isn't well-regulated. And lab analyses on CBD supplements have shown that a lot of these supplements contain way lower or way higher doses than the label states and sometimes even contain unlisted THC. So keep that in mind when you're choosing a product. And this happened to me. I got really, not, not stoned, but I got hyper and agitated. And uh, what I would say is uh, wired, you know, marijuana, the THC is a stimulant. It causes your heart rate to increase. CBD shouldn't be doing that if it's by itself. So I had this happen to me. I've experimented with probably half a dozen CBD products. So how much of it do you take? Now, this is a difficult question to answer because except for the pharmaceutical Epidiolex, which is used as CBD CBD medication used to treat epilepsy, CBD supplements are not regulated. So batches often vary in potency. And also, depending whether you vape it or take a gummy or, you know, rub it on yourself, it all affects you differently. So be sure to read product labels closely to understand what you're getting. What I tell you is this, go with oral and start with a low dosage and then go slow with increasing your dose because I've made myself feel very uncomfortable with some CBD products. And again, I, I didn't get it tested to see if it had the THC, but one, my heart rate started increasing, my uh, blood pressure went up a little bit, it was obvious that there was something more than just the CBD in it because CBD is supposed to. I took a big dose of this one product. I can't remember the name of the CBD product because I could. I had it once. I bought it from some shop in Miami Beach that was super sketchy looking, but I tried it. I slept amazingly well and um, it was awesome. And I couldn't find it again. And I couldn't, re- I threw away the wrapper so I couldn't remember the brand name, but it was awesome. And so what I want to tell you is there's variations in the CBD content between products. So use caution when you're starting uh, a different product or switching dose forms. And there's been a wide range of CBD doses that have been tested, but they really got to do more uh, studies before we figure out, okay, how can we narrow this down? Uh, for specific uses. So here's what I would recommend for you. Find a good company that's doing a good job with CBD and start there. And so my recommendation is Natural Stacks Dream CBD. Natural Stacks is a solid company. I've used their products. I love their biocreatine. I love their magtine, their uh, protein powder, which they unfortunately don't produce anymore was very good. I've tried a bunch of different natural stack supplements. It's high quality. 
So taking Natural Stacks Dream is a great place to start. Now, here, here's the thing. It has a 0.5 milligram or 500 microgram dose of melatonin, and it also has some lavender oil in it as well. So it's a great product, and I can't wait to get some when I get back to the States. And I can save you 25% off your order, your entire order, if you use the code LEGENDARY15, that's all capital le- LEGENDARY, all capital letters, the number's 15 at naturalstacksplus.com. So uh, that's where you can get the CBD and save 25% off your first order. Next supplement is tart cherry juice. And I've talked about tart cherry juice in the muscle growth and exercise performance because it helps you recover. It helps with arthritis pains, but it has a naturally occurring uh, it has naturally occurring melatonin in it. So you wouldn't take nel- melatonin and tart cherry juice. You would take one or the other. And I put this up because it's something I personally experimented with a lot. I have my, actually, this is the melatonin supplement, quote unquote, right? That I have my dad taking because it has it has an, oste- uh, an effect on osteoarthritis that taking melatonin doesn't have. And Yes, there is the juice, but what the studies have focused on is the juice concentrate because the cherry juice has a higher concentration of melatonin than the whole fruit, all right? And in one study, participants suffering from insomnia drank uh, 16 ounces of tart cherry juice or the same amount of placebo juice each day for two weeks. The cherry juice increased sleep time by an average of 85 minutes. That's pretty good. If you're suffering from insomnia and not sleeping for long periods of time, if you're not sleeping for that long, if you wake up in the morning after five hours of sleep or six hours of sleep and you just can't sleep any longer and you've tried melatonin, tart cherry juice is worth a try. So again, I've used it on and off. It's a fantastic uh, product. And how much do you drink? Well, I don't like drinking the juice juice. I like drinking the juice concentrate. So you would either take eight ounces of the juice twice a day, or you take uh, one ounce of the cherry juice concentrate twice a day. So I will say this, I started taking two ounces. I found that to be too much. I would get that melatonin hangover and feel kind of like nauseous in the morning because it's so strong. So what I do is I'd start with one ounce and go from there. You can also try half an ounce or you can try an ounce and a half or you can try two ounces, which uh, is what the studies used. So it's important to experiment to see if you choose tart cherry juice instead of melatonin to try this out. Now, there's only one tart cherry juice concentrate that I recommend. It's fruit fast tart cherry juice concentrate. And I recommend the concentrate over the juice because it's less expensive and uh, you can add it into water if you'd like and have, you know, make juice yourself if uh, you want the juice. So it's less expensive and you just buy one bottle of it instead of, you know, 32 ounces of cherry juice that you have to refill uh, every two days. So fruit fast tart cherry juice concentrate is the one that I recommend. I even reached out to the company because I like their products so much and tried to establish a relationship. Wasn't able to, but you can go on Amazon and find fruit fast tart cherry juice. And it is awesome. It is so high quality. Uh, The company is actually a fruit company, and this is just one of the fruit juices that they make. Just an excellent product. So the next one, next supplement is lavender. Now, lavender is traditionally used in aromatherapy for its relaxing scent, but you can also take it as an oral supplement, and it's been shown to reduce insomnia, increase deep sleep, and reduce anxiety. Now, really important, you're not going to feel anything from taking it. It's not a sedative. It doesn't have a sedative effect like CBD or even melatonin or some of the other supplements that we're going to be talking about. That said, it can improve your sleep. In fact, that's why the Natural Stacks Dream CBD includes it in its formula. And most of the studies showing improvements in sleep quality have been 
with people suffering from insomnia and people with generalized anxiety disorder. So if you suffer from insomnia or if you have higher levels of anxiety, lavender is worth a try. And one of the benefits uh, that I saw in, in particular with lavender is that people who take it wake up less during the night. So if this is an issue that you're struggling with, waking up during the night, taking lavender is a good thing to experiment with. To supplement orally, you want to take a special special type of lavender called Selexin. That's S-I-L-E-X-A-N. And you want to start with 80 milligrams of Selexin, and uh, you want to take that around 30 minutes or so before bed. And if you don't feel a difference after taking it for a week, you can increase the dose to 160 milligrams. And that's the maximum dose you should use. Now you can use lavender oil and you know the sprays that you spray on your pillow or the diffusers. But really, if you're serious about the results, experiment with taking it orally and then compare that with using aromatherapy and uh, aromatherapy and see the difference between the two. And there's only one product I recommend here. It's Integrative Therapeutics Lavender Oil. It's uh, the clinically studied lavender oil. It uses Selexin, what I talked about, and it's standardized at the amount that it should be. So this is the product that I recommend for lavender oil. Don't just buy any lavender oil supplement. Get the one that's been used in the studies. Why? Because supplement companies are full of crap and they'll sell you some garbage and take your money because you're trying to save a couple of bucks instead of getting the one that was used in the studies that has been proven to work. Don't be that person. The next supplement is lemon balm which is an aromatic herb that's been used for reducing stress and improving sleep since the Middle Ages. Specifically, it's been shown to reduce the time it takes to fall asleep. So although you can take it as a tea, again, taking it orally as a supplement is going to work better because you can dial in the dose. Of course, you can experiment with both, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So in a study on uh, human beings, the participants experienced a 42% reduction in insomnia symptoms after receiving 600 milligrams of lemon balm extract for 15 days. And it does have a mild sedative effect, so you don't want to take it when you need to be alert or aren't experiencing anxiety. So how much do you take? Well, the dosage range for lemon balm is 300 to 1200 milligrams taken you know, 30 to 60 minutes before bed. What I recommend doing, and you'll find this pretty standard with my advice, start with the lower dosage, then increase over time. So start with 300 milligrams, then increase to 600 over the course of a week if you don't feel a difference. And you can always experiment with a higher dose up to 1200 milligrams or so. Just make sure you feel a difference. And like I said, you can use the essential oil or lemon balm tea, but it's going to be more difficult to dial in the right dose. So try the supplement orally and then see what the results are because it's going to be the most direct route. And then try to, if you're dead set on using tea or aromatherapy, try to recreate the same effect using the oil. So two recommendations for you are both good. Lemon, uh, new chapter, Lemon Balm, don't have a, a connection with the company, so you can just get it on Amazon. And you can get, also try Oregon's Wild Harvest Lemon Balm. Both are good. Give it a try. Don't have a strong recommendation here. Just make sure you invest in a high quality product and don't go for the cheap stuff. Next one is valerian. So valerian root or valeriana officinalis has been used for centuries as an herbal remedy to reduce anxiety and promote sleep. So it's one of the most researched sleep supplements on the market, the second most researched sleep supplement on the market, second only to melatonin, but we're not really sure how it works. Researchers believe it increases the levels of GABA, which is gamma amino butyric acid it's a you know how some neurotransmitters stimulate you like norepinephrine for example gaba has the opposite effect of course this is a simplification depends on the part of your brain that it's acting on 
But GABA has uh, the opposite effect in general, and it calms you down, calms down your brain. So what do you do? You take a capsule or drink valerian tea 30 to 60 minutes before bed. Again, the oral supplement is going to be a more direct way. And then you can try the tea after if you don't like the oral supplement. And you want to look for products that are standardized for 0.8 to 1% valerinic acids. That said, I've found the doses and extracts to be highly individualized. I've used a bunch of different valerian products. And the two I'm going to recommend are from Nature's Way. Now, there's one. It's a Nature's Way standardized valerian, which is in a purple top bottle. It's in a white bottle with a purple top and a purple label. And uh, you just follow the directions on the label there for how much to take. I don't personally like this one, but my wife likes it. It works better for her. What I like is the Nature's Way. It's in a white bottle, but it's got a green top and it's just called Valerian Root. And um, it's 530 milligrams. So a very different dose. And it's not necessarily that standardized extract, but I like this one better because uh, it's less strong. I found like it, it doesn't help me go to sleep if I use the purple top. I like the green top better. I get better results. So it's up to you to kind of experiment. Uh, the green top is less powerful and the purple top is more powerful. So two options there. And that's the end of the supplements that I recommend that you take. So let's talk about supplements that you want to avoid. And why should you avoid these? Because they just cause problems. And the first thing I'll talk about here is caffeine. Now, it's not a sleep uh, supplement that you should avoid. It's just a supplement or you know uh, something you should avoid in general. Don't drink coffee late at night because even if you're a seasoned coffee veteran, and you can still sleep after drinking a cappuccino or espresso after a late meal, it's still going to affect your sleep quality. So just don't drink caffeinated beverages in the afternoon or evening, late afternoon or evening. The next thing I want you to stay away from is Finibut. Now, I'll tell you straight out, I don't have personal experience with this. And you may have not even heard of Finibit before. It's something I've read about for years. Haven't tried it because uh, I don't really feel like there's that much of a need. So Finibut or 4-amino-3-phenylbutyric acid is a non-prescription smart drug that's become really popular on places like Reddit. So people claim that it helps treat their social anxiety and can even induce euphoria. And uh, according to one study I read, it was first synthesized by Russians during the 1960s to relieve tension, anxiety, and fear. Apparently, Russia uses it with their surgical patients in hospitals and feel it's superior to benzodiazepines. So here's what you need to know. And I'm telling you this not just to talk to you about it because you may or may not have heard about it. If you're in the biohacking community, you probably have heard about it. If you haven't, if you're not that deep into the craziness, then you probably haven't, but it's something that your kids might find. And so at the moment, Finibut is technically legal to buy in the, the US in pillar capsule form, fairly easy to find online. The big issue I have with Finibut is that if you read some of the horror stories, people get develop a dependence on it very quickly. So if you were going to use it every once in a while, it might be okay. But what ends up happening is people take it over and over and over, especially people struggling with anxiety. And it leads to these horrible stories where people are just taking the big doses and end up in the ER and they pass out in their front lawn. It's just something that I just don't see a, a place for it when there's so many other safer and, a more, and arguably more effective options. And when you stop taking it after you've been taking it for a while, you can experience withdrawal symptoms that include nausea, muscle aches, ag uh, anxiety, agitation, trouble sleeping, and even seizures. And if you read some of the horror stories about it, it just doesn't seem like it's worth the time. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is over-the-counter sleep aids. Now, most of these that go by names like Nitol, Somonex, Unisom, their main ingredient is antihistamines. So the setup of effects of antihistamines 
develop quickly. So you, you build up a tolerance to them quickly and they leave you feeling super groggy the next day. Another issue is that a lot of them, like Tylenol PM, for example, also contains acetaminophen. So if it's something that you're taking regularly, just not good. Might be okay for that every once in a while situation. But again, there's so many better options that are actually going to improve your health and not just knock you out. So those are the things that you want to stay away from. Now I want to talk about, this is a little bit of a bonus section here, some sleep products that I love. The first one is uh, blue light blocking glasses from Carbon Shade. Now I've tried several different blue light blocking glasses. Carbon Shade was the best. Their glasses block 99.9% of the melanopic lux, which is all the wavelengths of light that are known to suppress melatonin production. And they wrap around your eyes so they don't let light sneak in around the lenses. And I can even save you 20% off your purchase when you use the code TED at checkout. So if you use the the, the KED, don't use KEDs or, I mean, don't put them on your face at least. So if you use the code TED, all capital letters, at carbonshadeglasses.com, you can save 20% off of your order. They're fantastic. I've tried, I have them. Uh, I use them. I won't say every night because I get lazy sometimes. I'm a human being who's flawed, just like everyone else. And uh, sometimes I don't wear them, but I mostly wear them and I've taken them They've uh, lasted for the past two years traveling throughout Asia, probably the glasses that I've had the longest in my life that haven't broken because I'm known for breaking glass frames. So the next sleep product that I love is the Aura Ring. Oh my gosh. I'm wearing my Aura right now. I wear it every single day. I charge it religiously. I wear it religiously. It's the most advanced wearable on the market, especially if optimizing your sleep and recovery are important to you. Now, listen, it's 300 bucks for the ring or the one that I have costs 400. So it's a hundred extra because I have the stealth. I liked, I wanted the matte black. So there's no func- difference in functionality. It's purely aesthetic, but I wanted the matte black one. So it's more expensive than other wearables, but you get what you pay for. And listen, if you're struggling with low energy, this is what I tell my clients. If you're struggling with low energy levels or poor sleep, investing in an aura ring is a no brainer. It is amazing. It is the number one thing that is allowed me to adjust my sleep and also to test supplements to see if I actually get a result because I can compare daily, weekly, or monthly. And I can see, am I getting, am I improving? Yes or no. It's as simple as that. Now there are some drawbacks to the aura ring, but not many. It is just fan freaking tastic. And I can't share this whole link with you. It's AuraRing.com slash partners slash legendary life. So I guess I can share it with you. AuraRing.com slash partners slash legendary life. And you just use that link and you can save $50 off an Aura Ring. Again, it's a bit of an investment, but it's one that pays you back because yes, it costs you, but what is poor sleep costing you? And I would argue it's costing you everything. And when you get that data and see, oh, I need to, I I can work on this. And it even gives you ideas about how to improve your sleep. It's a no brainer. Simple as that. The next one, substantially less expensive, but still very effective, which is soft foam earplugs. Now, earplugs are something I wear almost every night. If you have a partner who snores, a pet that makes noise, neighborhood with a lot of noise pollution, In other words, you hear the cars outside, driving around honking, then spending a few dollars to get these things and wearing them every night can improve the quality of your sleep. So many of us, we don't realize that even if a sound doesn't wake us up completely so that we're fully awake, it can still pull us out of the deeper phases of sleep. I've actually seen a study where they were where the scientists had this one person and every time they were, they had the polysomnograph hooked up to them. So every time they saw their test subject go into deep sleep, 
they would make a noise that was just loud enough and long enough to pull them out of, to change the brain waves, to pull them out of deep sleep into light sleep, but not loud enough to wake them up. That could be happening to you every night and earplugs can fix that. The last thing I'll recommend is sleep mask, a uh, sleep master sleep mask. Uh, oh, by the way, you can go on to Amazon and get soft foam earplugs. Just make sure they're soft foam because if they're hard and wearing them all night, and especially if you sleep on your slot, your side can cause your ears to ache and that's no fun. So sleep master sleep mask. Now, while I recommend you invest in blackout blinds, I know that some of you may travel. Some of you may not be able to do that right away. So the sleep master sleep mask is the most comfortable and effective sleep mask I've used. It's awesome. It feels nice. It wraps around your head using Velcro. It fits comfortably. It stays snug and uh, you can adjust it to get it just right. Don't have a relationship with the company. Although, um, yeah, we will probably try to reach out to them and make one because it's such an awesome product. But you can go to amazon.com, type in Sleep Master Sleep Mask and buy one for yourself and test it out. Now let's go back to the supplements for a second and talk about putting together stacks. So the first stack contains two supplements, two core supplements, magnesium and melatonin. So again, make sure you're eating enough green leafy vegetables, nuts, and fish so you get enough magnesium. But again, it's not clear what the optimal amount of magnesium is. We're just talking about getting the adequate amount. So it's not worth ex- so it is worth experimenting with magnesium supplementation to see if you notice an improvement in your sleep. So start with magnesium. And if falling asleep or waking up energized is still an issue, then try adding 0.5 milligrams of melatonin before you go to bed. And again, you can increase the dose of melatonin by 0.5 milligrams each week until you find the lowest effective dose that works. And by the way, just to go over magnesium, you would take 200 milligrams of elemental magnesium. And again, that elemental magnesium, we'll talk about that a bit more in a second, but you're looking for 200 to 350 grams of elemental magnesium and starting with 0.5 milligrams of melatonin 30 minutes before bed. Now, instead of melatonin, you could use tart cherry juice, starting with one ounce and adjusting from there. Just don't go over five milligrams of melatonin if you take melatonin. And start with these two supplements before you try anything else. Now, if you really have trouble, even after adding this, then try the CBD Dream Natural Stacks product because it has, and and stack that with magnesium. So then you would be taking magnesium, CBD, lavender oil, and 0.5 milligrams of melatonin. And try that if you're really having sleep issues. Those are the things you can try. Now, if you have anxiety and an overactive mind, try taking the magnesium, 200 to 350 milligrams, and melatonin, 0.5, starting with 0.5 milligrams and building up from there. And also take lavender, starting with 80 milligrams of selexin per day and working up to 160 milligrams per day over the course of a week if that first dose doesn't work take the second dose, and lemon balm, starting with 300 milligrams per day and working up to 600 milligrams, all the way up to 1,200 milligrams uh, over the course of a couple weeks if the lower dose doesn't work. And you want to take those all 30 minutes before bed. Now, what about people who don't have trouble falling asleep but never feel rested in the morning? Well, what I'd recommend is starting with the magnesium, 200 to 350 milligrams, and melatonin, starting with 0.5 milligrams and adjusting up from there. And you take that half an hour before bed. But what you take in addition to that is 600 milligrams of the ashwagandha KSM 66 extract. If you feel run down in the morning, even after a full night of sleep, it may be something with your cortisol rhythms because cortisol is not, it's a stress hormone, but it's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's just when there's too much or when the timing is wrong. So you want cortisol to be high in the morning, but you want it to be low at night. And so many of us, we end up backwards with high cortisol at night, causing our issues with sleep and then low cortisol in the morning so that you don't have enough energy in the morning. And if you've been doing this long enough, 
You have low, low cortisol all the time because you're just suffering from severe burnout and you're just always tired. So ashwagandha is the ideal supplement to give this uh, to give this a try. Now, as far as taking it timing wise, I would take it. I would experiment. I like taking it either in the morning or before exercise. I don't like taking it before bed. I feel like it doesn't help with my sleep. It disrupts it. That said, I haven't been able to try the ashwagandha KSM sixty six extract from Daily Nutra. So it may work differently. I can't wait to, I can't get it out here in Asia. So I've got to, I've, I'll have it waiting for me as soon as I get to my dad's place in Vero. So let's get into some frequently asked questions. What if I fall into one more, one or more of the, uh, into more than one category of the sleep issues? And here's the thing. You're going to have to test things, experiment, combine supplements. There's nothing really wrong here. It's just, I've given you some guidelines and it's up to you to kind of test them. I do recommend starting with my recommendations and going from there and just adjusting, you know, and, and experimenting. And if you have a sleep, uh, a medical problem that's disrupting your sleep, like sleep apnea, nocturia, if you're postmenopausal, you know, talk to your doctor about it too, as uh, a sleep supplement is just a band-aid. And also practice sleep hygiene. Don't think that a supplement is going to make up for the fact that you stay up till three in the morning watching Netflix or working for that matter. Um, it's not going to wake up at like six. You know, it's not going to help you. All right. You can't go without quality sleep. So the next one is, can I add a supplement to my stack that isn't covered in this presentation? And what I want to tell you is I don't know everything. But the things that I've gone over here are backed or have a lot of strong evidence to work or my personal experience testing things and still have scientific evidence. It's just I'm adding my personal experience and you know why I would recommend something because I believe personal experience, a combination of personal experience and science are both important. You can't just always use the research only or always use personal experience only. It's got to be some combination of both. In my opinion, that's what I look for in the people that I learn from. And that's what I want to present to you. That's what I believe in. So if you're going to try something and you're just like, yeah, whatever, man, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, Ted, research the product and the company just to make sure you're getting a quality product from a reputable company. But I would highly recommend you start with what I'm sharing with you and then go from there. So can you modify the doses? Well, listen, you can always take less than the recommended amount if you're getting an effect from it, but never take more. Don't be that person, please. It can be counterproductive or even dangerous in some circumstances. Number four is I get diarrhea when I take magnesium. How do I avoid this? Well, as we've talked about, disaster pants is a well-known side effect of ingesting too too much magnesium at one time. It can also be caused by taking a poorly absorbed form of magnesium like magnesium oxide. So what you want to do if you've had this problem is you want to make sure you're taking a higher magnesium supplement with higher bioavailability. So something like magnesium threonate, magnesium gluconate, magnesium glycinate, magnesium citrate, and split the doses up throughout the day. And if you still have diarrhea after doing that, or loose stools, then try lowering your dose or even switching brands. Number five is, what's elemental magnesium? Well, elemental refers to the weight of magnesium by itself. For example, taking 500 milligrams of magnesium gluconate means you get 27 milligrams of elemental magnesium. Now, if the supplement is a solid supplement, they're telling you, like Natural Stacks tells you, 200 milligrams of elemental magnesium for each dose. So it tells you that's the sign of a good supplement. So make sure you read the supplement labels to understand the amount of elemental magnesium you're you're getting. And if it says on the label 27 milligrams of magnesium as in parentheses as magnesium gluconate, that means 27 milligrams of elemental magnesium and 473 milligrams of gluconic acid. So you want to make sure it says Uh, It's telling you how much magnesium you're getting and not just how much of the compound that you're getting, like magnesium gluconate, for example, 500 milligrams of magnesium gluconate. Let's talk about troubleshooting for a second. 
Just remember that sleep supplements aren't a substitute to practicing good sleep hygiene. I've said that many times, but I'm going to repeat it again. You should only take these supplements if lifestyle changes haven't worked or if you're doing them in combination with lifestyle changes. And don't feel like you got to take this stuff every night. Now, I would take magnesium every night just because you want to get enough of it per day. It's really, uh, uh, unlike any of the other supplements that we've talked about, it's really like something you should be getting from your food, but a lot of us don't get enough of it, or we have problems digesting our food and we don't get enough, we don't absorb enough of the magnesium that we're eating in our diet. But that said, you don't feel like you have to take the other stuff, the melatonin. Listen, I've taken melatonin on nights where I didn't need it and I slept worse. And I've noticed that's something that happens. So I actually sleep better without taking melatonin. I only take melatonin when I feel like I need it. And lastly, it might take a few months of experimentation to find a stack that works best for you. Keep experimenting and don't give up. And really invest in that aura ring if you really want to run experiments because it will show you whether what you're doing is working or not. Yes, feeling better is great, but if you can actually see something measurable, get some metrics, and like, wow, I'm sleeping a whole other 30 minutes or 60 minutes after I started taking this, and then I took the supplement away, and then you know that 30 to 60 minutes has gone back down again, you'll know that it works for sure for you. And that's the most important experiment of all. Lastly, once your sleep quality has improved, try going without your sleep supplements to see if you're still getting benefits from taking them. The goal isn't to always be taking supplements. The goal is to take as little supplements as possible and get everything you need by improving your health, by adjusting your exercise, your uh, nutrition, and your lifestyle. So that's it for me today. And I'll tell you this, Maybe it's been a while since you look forward to beach season or you're talking about this supplement stuff and you're like, oh man, you know, I really need to focus on my body and I want to feel energized throughout the day. I want to feel more capable and confident to do what I really want. And I know I'm relying on supplements and I'm taking the easy way out and true transformation doesn't come in a bottle that costs you 25 bucks. So if you're ready to have the body you deserve and you want to say goodbye to the searching for the magic pill that doesn't exist, I'm here to help you. So the best place to start is to watch our masterclass. I have one for women, one for men. Go to legendarylifepodcast.com slash free to watch the masterclass. Now, legendarylifepodcast.com slash free to watch the masterclass for either the women or the men. So hope you enjoyed this. See you in the next guide. Experiment wisely and don't ever give up on your health. Talk to you soon.